Hello, welcome to Ian HRP on YouTube and welcome to today's video where we are going to be looking at the uh, Panasonic 14mm lens uh, for the Micro Four Thirds system. Uh, currently sitting on the Lumix GX8, if you've not seen the video review of that I will link it down below and up there for you to have a look. Um, this is a cheap, basically, uh, it's a, well, relatively cheap, it's an inexpensive 14 millimeter lens, which on the Micro Four Thirds system equates to a 25, uh, to, sorry, 28 millimeter prime lens. Um, so nice and wide um, lens to have, and it's useful for video work, which is the main reason I brought the camera and the lens. I'm currently recording this on the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. This is going to be my second lens, as you would have seen if you've seen the video. If you did watch the review, just sidestepping slightly, um, I mentioned about the fact that this has a two and a half millimeter headphone jack, uh, sorry, microphone jack on the camera. Very strange. And most microphones that you buy, including this cheap uh, horseshoe one, have a three and a half millimeter jack um, on there. So I brought this all the way from China, took about a month to arrive, which was meant to be a 3.5 to a 2.5 step down that works with microphones. Unfortunately, this doesn't work. Um, apparently it doesn't provide any power to this, which is a, you don't need batteries for this microphone. It should be powered by the camera and that doesn't provide any power. Waste of money, lovely. So why a 14 millimeter or 28 millimeter full frame equivalent? Well, it gives you a nice wide um, view, field of view. So um, I currently have, for this particular camera, uh, I brought three lenses for it. So I have the 25 millimeter um, nifty 50, so that's 50 millimeter, which is quite a, a wide, uh, a close shot. Um, and then I've got the 45 to 100, uh, 150, which would be a um, 80 to 300 equivalent. Can't really use that for indoor video shooting at all, because it's also not very fast. Um, so I wanted a lens that gave me a nice field of view. Um, this is a one point, it's Sunday morning, it took me a long time to just work out what I was gonna say then. Um, anyway. So this is an f2.5 lens, so it's not particularly fast, it's not particularly bright, um, but for ideal, for outdoor work, it's absolutely fine. I'm currently using the Olympus 14 to, uh, sorry, 12 to 45, 12 to 40, oh, Brain in gear, Ian. So I'm currently using the 12 to 40 millimeter pro lens on the EM1, um, which I couldn't afford to buy another one of them. Um, so I wanted something that's just a prime lens, nice and wide for video shooting, and this is my ideal choice. So let's have a closer look at this lens. Before we get too much into the review of the Lumix 14 millimeter lens, just wanted to let you know, um, I've launched a brand new podcast um, yes, I know everybody's doing them, but I've launched one that I'm really happy with and really proud of. Uh, basically, it's the As Yet Unnamed podcast, and it's long-form interviews one-on-one -on -one with people of interest. We've had Joe Lysett so far. He was episode number one. We've had Lucas McFarlane, dancer, um, and we've also got loads of, of really interesting people. Edmund and Terracopian, really, 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 really interesting talk with him. So you can watch them down below. I'm, I'm using the link on my YouTube channel, or you can listen as normal with any podcast on a podcast app. Um, so if you're interested, click down below. And while you're here, why not click on subscribe, like, comment and share, all the usual bits we ask you to do as YouTubers, but it really does help when you click on subscribe and the notification bell as well. So on with the video. We currently have the Panasonic Lumix 14 mm lens on the Panasonic GX8. Um, if you've not seen the review, I will put a link down below for you to have a look at that. This is a recent purchase of a fairly old camera. Um, as you can see, it's a nice slim design. Um, it's a almost a pancakey lens type thing, but it does look really nice on the camera um, and it just feels nice as well. It's not particularly heavy um, and it's uh, yeah, it looks all right, actually. Right, let's just take this off the camera. And um, before anyone shouts at me, I will make sure I put another lens on. 
because I haven't got the body cap for the camera somewhere. So as you can see, the construction of the lens is metal and plastic, a uh, metal backplate, which is always nice to see. No weather sealing on here, so it isn't a weather sealed lens. Um, the rest of the lens is plastic. The front element, you've got a 46 millimeter thread. So if you want to put a filter on, you can do. They're not particularly expensive for that size. And then the only other feature you have on here is the um, manual zoom ring, which I believe is a uh, fly-by-wire zoom rather than a zoom motor, as you would expect for a lens this small. Um, but it's really nice. It's a very compact lens. It's absolutely tiny. Uh, in fact, let me show you with the trusty old style um, tape measure. We are from the lens cap to the back of the lens. It's about roughly three and a half centimeters. So that's all we are. Uh, very thin indeed. And woo, knocking everything over. So let's have a look now at some images um, taken with the 14 millimeter Lumix lens. Um, all of these are at f2.5, I believe. So let's have a look at this first image. Let's go full screen. There we are. Um, so this is an image of a flower. I just want to see what it was like close up. Um, you actually get nice, you get quite nice bokeh um, at the back and quite nice separation as well, um, even at f2.5. Um, so I'm quite impressed with that actually. Um, these are all shot on the GX8 um, as the camera as well. And you do get some nice detail coming up on these images. Um, and again, it's slightly bright on there. I could have edited that slightly better. Um, but you do get quite a decent-ish blurry background. Uh, this is Bryn um, lying in the sun when we had some sunny weather in the garden. And actually, with a bit of editing um, and a bit of colour changing, etc., bringing out some of the clarity, um, you do get some nice images from both the camera and also the lens itself as well. And you can get fairly close up to your subject, um, so you can even see the bugs uh, in the corner there. And then using some black and white, I want to see how it handled looking directly into the sun. And there is actually uh, there's a little bit of flare just there. But overall, the lens doesn't cope too badly um, if you want to bring the sun in. And this gives you an idea of the field of view you can get. So this is a um, 14 millimeter, obviously, because it's a 14 millimeter lens. Um, but you can see the, the field of view. It's a nice wide angle lens. You get lots of information in there. Uh, this was a panorama shot um, made up of, I think, about three or four images. Um, and I just want to see how it copes. Obviously, it's very dark in the corners, but that's more my editing than the actual lens itself. Um, and again, really nice detail. Um, and you're not getting any fringing, actually. There's a tiny little bit if you really pixel peep, but if you just use a I don't like pixel peeping. It really annoys me, um, pixel peepers, um, because not many people will go, oh, look, you can get so close into that image that you can see a bit of purple. Um, most people don't do that. So, yeah, overall, really nice. And then you have to include a dandelion in any photograph you take um, when you're out and about. Um, but again, it just shows the some nice separation, nice blurry background as well, even at 2.5. So my final thoughts on the Panasonic Lumix 14mm 2.5 lens for micro four thirds. Um, for what it is, it's actually, it's a really nice lens. It's good pitch quality, good video quality, a nice wide field of view, which is what I wanted. Um, it is still relatively expensive for for what it is. You can pick up these for under £200 um, on the second hand market. If you want to buy it new, I think they're still about 250 which, when you ask me, that's quite a lot of money for what, for what it is. Um, so shop around is my recommendation for you on that one. Uh, make sure you have a look at some of the second hand sites, uh, eBay, um, mpb.com, all of those usual ones that you can buy second hand equipment from um, to see if you can get a good quality version. Um, so yeah, overall, it's nice, it does what it needs to do for me, which is a nice wide angle video lens. Obviously there is no image stabilization um, within the lens itself, so you will need a camera that has in-body stabilization. The GX8, the GX8 does, but not for 4K. The EM1 does for all of them. So if you pair it with the right camera, you should be able to get some decent stabilization as well. 
So overall, really happy with the lens. It's another one to add to the bag and my ever grown expanding lens collection. Um, I changed to Micro Four Thirds to have less equipment and lighter equipment. I now just seem to have loads, but anyway, uh, perhaps I'll do a what's in my camera bag so you can see all of the equipment I've got in the next few weeks. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, don't forget, there is my podcasts, um, which are out every Monday morning. Uh, there'll be a link below. You can listen to them on all of the podcast apps and you can also watch them on my YouTube channel as well. There's some just really interesting conversations which are going down well and I'm really happy that people are enjoying the podcast. So if you want to have a look, uh, click on the links below and have a listen or watch of the podcast as well. So until the next video, thank you very much for watching. I have been Ian HRP. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, click, share, subscribe, all that usual stuff that you all ask to do. Until next time, thanks for watching and bye for now.